Hi, I'm Bob Helsel from the IVI Foundation. Welcome to the IVI Getting Started Guide videos. Our purpose is to provide you with an easy tutorial on using IVI drivers in the development environment of your choice. After a brief introduction, a technical expert will show you how to use drivers with your ADE. First, I'd like to go over a few key benefits in using IVI drivers. They will save you time in your program development. Number one is interchangeability. IVI drivers enable the exchange of instruments in your system with minimal code changes, reducing time and effort. Two, ease of use. You can use your favorite ADE such as Visual Basic, Visual C++, LabVIEW, Lab Windows, MATLAB, or V. The standard APIs provide fast, intuitive access to functions. Three is quality. You'll have common commands and desirable options. The Foundation's rigorous testing ensures driver quality. Four is simulation. Simulation allows code development and testing even when an instrument is unavailable. We'll be taking advantage of the IVI simulation feature as not all viewers will have this hardware available. Fifth is performance and reliability. Examples of these are capabilities such as range checking and state caching. These are some of the key features of IVI drivers that will cut your program development time. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you'll first need to download and install an IVI driver. There are two ways to do that. You can go to the driver registry page on the IVI website, or you can go to the instrument vendor's website. Find the 34401A driver, download and install it before taking the tutorial. Now let's go to the product expert for your ADE. Hello. And welcome to the IVI Getting Started Guide for Visual C Sharp and Visual Basic.net. My name is Kurt Peterson and I am from National Instruments. I will walk you through the simple example and demonstrate how to set up an IVI.NET driver. The software required for this example is listed on the screen. For assistance with finding and installing the software, refer to the IVI Getting Started Guide on the resources page of the IVI Foundation website. We'll start by creating a new project in Visual Studio. In here, we're going to create a console application targeting the .NET 4.5 framework. Once we've filled out the parameters, we can click OK to create the new project. Once we create our project, we need to make sure that we add the appropriate references. To do this, we go to the Solution Explorer and right click on References. In the Reference Manager window, we select Extensions and then scroll down to the National Instruments section. Once here, we need two assemblies, National Instruments Common and National Instruments .instruments .niscope .fx45. Once we've selected these, we can click OK. Now we can see them added as references in our project. Now that we've specified these assemblies in our project, we need to specify their namespaces in the program. The first namespace that we need to specify is using national instruments. The other namespace that we need is NISCOPE. This is a member of other namespaces. When we type using and then national instruments and put the dot, we will see that IntelliSense lets us know what other members are part of those namespaces. So for this, we go to Modular Instruments and then see that NISCOPE is under there. Now that we've declared our namespaces, we can create a scope object. The way that we do this is by declaring a new variable, MyScope session, and then calling the NISCOPE constructor. As you can see from IntelliSense, NISCOPE has three overloads. We're going to use the third one. From IntelliSense, we can see that there are four parameters we need to enter. The first one is the resource string. This is defined in Measurement and Automation Explorer, where we've defined a simulated NISCOPE device. Next is the ID query, which we will set to false. 
Next is reset the device, which we will set to true. And finally, we will specify that we're using a simulated device in the option string. Next, we're going to declare a timeout variable. Timeout is part of an input that we will use later in this program. And so we're going to declare it now. It is part of the National Instruments Common namespace, and it has the type precision time span. We will set the timeout to five seconds. There is one more variable that we need to declare, and that is the channel name variable. It is of type string, and we are going to set that equal to the string value of zero. Again, this is going to be later used in our program, and so we are going to declare it now. Now that we've declared all of our variables, we can start configuring our scope. The first set of parameters that we are going to configure are the vertical range. This is done on a channel by channel basis. So in order to do that, we need to access the channels on our scope session. Once we have access to a channel, we can call the configure method on it. For channel zero, we're going to configure the vertical range to be one volt, configure the vertical offset to be zero volts, set the vertical coupling to DC coupling, set our probe attenuation to one, and then finally, we will set our channel enabled to true. This makes sure that we are acquiring on that channel. Next, we need to configure the timing for our scope session. Because this is a simulated device, there is a simulated signal on channel zero. As with a real world signal, we need to make sure that we take enough samples per second so that we can see the entire signal. 1.5 million should be enough for our purposes. Now that we've configured the timing in our channel, we can initiate the session. Once our program gets to this point, we will start the acquisition on the device. Once the scope session is initiated, we're able to take measurements from the device. For this example, we're going to take a frequency measurement. The frequency measurement is a scalar measurement. This means it returns a one-dimensional array with a single value. In this example, we are getting the frequency on channel zero. We need to call the fetch scalar measurement method with the enum scope scalar measurement type set to frequency. In this method is where we use the timeout that we defined earlier in our program. Now that we have our frequency measurement, the next thing to do is to display it. The way we do this is by calling the console.writeLine method and then use the format specifier 0.0.00 to display the data. This specifier will show us two decimal places. In order to keep our console window open after our calls have finished, we call the console.readKey method to wait for an input. After we have taken our measurement and are done using the scope, we must close the session. We do this by calling the close method on the scope object. This is a very important step in the program because it ensures that we no longer maintain any references to the device. We then set the myscope session object to null. Now that we've written the code to create the scope object, configure the horizontal and vertical parameters, initiate the device, take the measurement, and display the data in the console, we can now run the program. As you can see, we are reading a signal that is approximately 100,000 kilohertz. This is the expected value. Lastly, we will take a brief look at the equivalent vb.net code. As you can see, most of the method calls are the same. To enforce type checking, we use the line option explicit on at the top of the file. Now let's run the program. We can see that it gets the same output as the other. This concludes the tutorial. 
For more information, please refer to other videos, tutorials, and documentation on the IVI Foundation's website. For information on Visual C Sharp or Visual Basic, refer to articles on MSDN. Thank you for watching.